Welcome to chapter four. Today's lesson is on using graphs to relate two quantities. So in this lesson, we're going to represent mathematical relationships using graphs specifically. So our first couple blanks are the following. We can use graphs to visually represent the relationship between two variable quantities as they both change. Feel free to pause here to catch up. In example one, we have this graph of air in a balloon. It says the graph shows the volume of air in a balloon as you blow it up until it pops. What are the variables? Describe how the variables are related at various points on the graph. Well, first of all, the variables are the x and y axes labels. So the variables are volume and time. And remember, variables are just the quantities that are changing, and obviously, as a balloon is being blown up, the volume of the balloon is increasing and the time is going by. So those are our variables. Now I'll describe how the variables are related at various points in the graph. Well, first of all, the volume increases each time air is put into the balloon. So as you can see right here, there is more air being put into the balloon. So let's write that. Now what is happening in the graph when it is straight across horizontally? At these points right here, time's going by but the volume is not increasing. So that is when you pause to breathe. So the volume stays constant each time you pause to breathe. And what's happening at the very end of the graph? Well, as you can see, it drops. The volume drops all the way to zero. So at that point, the balloon is popping. So the volume decreases to zero when the balloon pops in the middle of the fourth blow. And that's it for example one. In addition to analyzing graphs, we're going to be studying tables. Tables and graphs can show relationships between variables. They are both visual representations. Data from a table are often displayed using a graph to visually represent the relationship. In example two, we have this situation. A band allowed fans to download its new video from its website. The table shows the number of downloads after one, two, three, and four days. Which graph could represent the data shown in the table? Well, first of all, let's take a look at the number of downloads. 346, 1011, 3455, and 10426. Well, you can see that it's increasing, so we can immediately get rid of graph D because graph D is going down, and we just talked about that, it's going up instead. So D's gone. Now let's take a look at the difference between each of the rows. From 346 to 1011, that's approximately 6 or 700. The next one is approximately 2300 and the next difference is approximately 700 or 7000 actually 7000 so do you think that's the same number over and over again is it increasing by the same number the answer is no 700 2300 and 7000 are not the same number so they are not increasing at the same rate so that means we can get rid of a now we're between graphs B and C the difference between graphs B and C is that graph B, the increases are getting bigger, and in graph C, the increases are getting smaller and smaller. So let's take a look at our differences in the green over there. 700, 2300, 7000, the difference between those values is getting bigger. So that means we want to have graph B. And now I'm going to write down a summary that I'd like you to write down as well on your notes. So feel free to pause after I write this. In the table, the total number of downloads increases each day. The graph should rise from left to right, and each rise should be steeper than the previous graph. So talking about this example we just looked at, the number of downloads is on the vertical axis, and the day is on the horizontal axis. So we can say that the number of downloads depends on the day. That makes sense. It's not the other way around. It's not the day depends on the number of downloads. The number of downloads depends on what day it is. So we have the downloads on the vertical axis and the day on the horizontal axis. So now let's make this more general. 
When one quantity depends on another, the independent quantity is going to be on the horizontal axis and the dependent quantity is going to be on the vertical axis. So why don't you draw a little graph like the one that I have below and we're going to label which axis is which. So what this means is that the dependent quantity is relying on the other quantity to figure out what value that is. And that will make more sense once we do a problem, such as example 3. A model rocket rises quickly and then slows to a stop as its fuel burns out. It begins to fall quickly until the parachute opens, after which it falls slowly back to Earth. What sketch of a graph could represent the height of the rocket during its flight? Label each section. Well first let's think to ourselves, what are the variables? What is changing in this situation? Those two quantities will be our labels for the x and y axis. So think about it for a second. The two variables that are changing are time and height. So that's going to be the two labels for the axes. Now let's think about it for a second. Where should time go? And where should height go? Well, the height is the value that depends on the time. So the height is going to be on the vertical axis and the time is going to be on the horizontal. Now that we have our graph labeled, let's take a look at the description again and underline the key phrases. The first one is rises quickly. What's that going to look like? Well, let's have a curve that goes up fairly quickly. Okay, now slows to a stop, and that's when the fuel is burning out. So slows to a stop is going to be at the top, and let's label that. Then what happens is that it begins to fall quickly. So that's our next key phrase, so it's falling quickly like this, and then it falls slowly when the parachute opens. So something like that graph, and let's label the rest. So let's go through this again. This is what's happening to the model rocket. It rises quickly, and it slows to a stop as the fuel burns out. And then what happens is that it's falling quickly, because of gravity. Then the parachute opens at this point right here and it falls slowly back to the earth. So this is a real life problem. As you can see we're using math and we're using logic and all that and we're just sketching what's going on. So now that completes 4.1. You can feel free to try 4.1 lesson check now or you can wait until we do problems like this together during class. Just make sure you do it.